The holiday season is nearly upon us. Um, and when I think of the holidays, I think of kicks. And that's why we are running episode 5 of Ronnie 2 Kicks, where we are looking ahead to one of my favorite holidays of the year, which is, of course, Thanksgiving. When you think of Thanksgiving, you think of turkey, you think of chicken, you think of duck, you think of the turduckins. And so this episode is going to feature one of my good friends, Dion Point, from Concepts. We're going to get to interview him later, but we are talking all things turduckin in this fun episode where we look at this crazy and wild shoe to celebrate the holidays. So let's get started. We look at a lot of different shoes on these episodes, but these might be the wildest and wackiest idea that has come up yet, and I'm all for it. So let's look at the turduckins. This is the packaging. Now, it's an oven. It's actually like you get delivered a box that is an oven uh what wild and wacky packaging i love it very cool and then you know you open it and the first thing you see is a meal so you have you know there's a turkey leg which is actually a nerf vortex football which reminds me so much of thanksgiving as a kid we would go play three flies up with these vortexes and then you got your gravy you got your uh, raspberry pie, you got your corn, you got your mashed potatoes. It's it's the whole package. So now I'm gonna pull out the Nike SBs, hopefully. We won't get this on video. <laughs> we have the duck dunks. And so this is made out of real life duck. No, okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, but these are really cool. I mean, you got the iridescent swooshes, even the iridescent tongue. Um, and then all these duck features, you got feathers, like look at this one. This has got all these uh, duck feathers, the level of detail on this. I mean, Dion must have been obsessed with Thanksgiving. I can't wait to talk to him about it in our upcoming interview. And then I get into the socks, which are the, uh, the chicken. And they even got chicken feet. You, you wear these socks, you got chicken in the duck dunks. You got the duck and then you're in the oven of a turkey and so you got your perfect turducken very crazy very creative very unique and honestly the shoes themselves are pretty hot like i could see people wearing this and really uh standing out concepts is doing it big and it's gonna be fun to talk to them about this really fun shoe so let's get into it let's talk to dion point from concepts dion what's going on what's up ronnie man how you doing thank you i'm for having good me. Happy Thanksgiving. I mean, I think that you are the most fitting person to wish Thanksgiving to based on these shoes. Yeah, it's funny. We did it kind of based on Friendsgiving and football, but it definitely took on the narrative just given the holiday theme and whatnot. How important is, uh, you know, building a shoe line to supplement the clothing business um, in terms of like visibility and awareness? You know, obviously getting a, a Nike shoe really like takes you to a whole nother level. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. I mean, I think for us, it's uh, it's the only thing we have forward facing to the rest of the world for those that can't come and experience like our brick and mortar um, offering. So even though we have some stores, I think we have a uh, New York, Boston, Dubai, Shanghai. Uh, we're looking at some other places. Yeah, I mean, for the people that are at home and support us online or are just fans of us over the years, it's it's literally the only way we have to kind of reach out and get a hold of them and, and have them part of the team. So uh, the, the Nike projects in particular are absolutely the most fun because they allow us the, um, the ability to be as creative as we like. And this shoe is no exception to that. Let's talk about these uh, specifically. I mean, obviously Thanksgiving is one of the, my favorite holidays of the year. And you know, one of the big reasons I wanted to do this episode, like talk about like the craftsmanship, not only of the shoe, but even, even the packaging, the fact that you know, you have chicken socks within duck shoes, within uh, a turkey oven, just like the production, but then also the partnership with Nerf and uh, that packaging that, you know, played into everybody loving football on uh, on Thanksgiving. Yeah, um, appreciate that. So so one, things we, one of the things we did was we knew we had a holiday um, timeframe, uh, which was landing around November. What did we do? Uh, we loved football. We loved... Uh, the connectivity between like all these kind of things that um, help develop over time. And uh, the Duncan was something we had joked about 
for years and years and years. And I'm glad we actually get to kind of bring it to life. I think it was about six years now we've been talking about it. So um, definitely ridiculous, definitely in on the joke. Uh, we knew it was a little a lot of pocket, kind of very much in the same vein of ugly sweater, how we didn't want to do an actual Christmas shoe, but we want to do a holiday shoe that people are comfortable wearing in that time frame. So the storytelling doesn't stop with the shoes. So we added the Nerf Vortex football, which was like a holiday favorite. I think dating back to 96, which is when Oh man, I played three flies up with that Nerf football. <laughs> <laughs> I've been throwing it around. It's uh, it's That's addictive. Man, for sure. I, can, I can shut that thing back in the day. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we did the box on fire because most of us can't cook. We thought it was a good fun play on, on everything. So uh, yeah, chicken sock, duck shoe, um, turkey in the box. Well, I'm definitely wearing those chicken socks. All, all on fire. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are talking leg day jokes. I didn't really think of that, but uh, yeah, I guess if you're into weightlifting, uh, that applies. So that's amazing. Um, talk to me about the shoes specifically now, and how like the design of that came together, and how you even thought about like the feathers, and then the iridescent uh, swoosh and tongue. Those were the two kind of particular pieces that stood out to me. So. If you could talk about that. Uh, yeah, awesome. absolutely. I think uh, the first thing was the sole. We wanted to do orange, uh, but not so vibrant that it was uh, literal. So we did uh, kind of peach uh, hues. We thought that kind of brought it together a little bit more. Uh, we did do the iridescent swoosh. So you'll see it kind of wrap from blue to green. Yeah. Uh, that was, you know, based on the head of the, of the mallard duck, which is the most popular um, color spectrum wise. For the uh, mid panel, for like anybody up and coming that wants to do sneaker design, unfortunately, I I tried and tried and tried to get actual feathers. Uh, we, we had it planned out. It was in all my initial mock-ups. Uh, it just wasn't a realistic uh, ask at this time. So we kind of did this little webbing that appeared. Yeah, did you have PETA after you? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, everything, uh, all the materials are safe, though. They're, uh, <laughs> the, none of this is real, thank God. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, being that it is a skate shoe, uh, I did take into account that there's a lot of wear and tear, especially in the forefront. So as you uh, skate and wear it, this will actually peel up in shape and it will give like a Oh, that's shape. cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. then we did uh, Duck High Pro. I don't know if you can see that there. Yeah. Uh, so that was the first instance of them changing the name from Dunk High to Duck High. And then for the, the liner, we did a really uh, supple like leather uh, toe yeah. print. It's, it's very unique. Uh, it's in some of the clothing that accompanied the shoe, uh, if you're able to get your hands on that. And, and it's got like some lobster call outs and a few different weird things like shoes hanging from trees and things like that. Um, super detail oriented and, and uh, although it's quite literal, we did our best to make sure that the shoe pops. And then last but not least, uh, butter laces, which you have to have in cranberry sauce laces, <laughs> which uh, which are a must around this time frame. So uh, they, they really break up the color too, because we thought it was a little mundane at some point. So. Um, yeah, we're super excited with it, man. How cool was it for you to get to work on a Nike SB project? Because th this year, it just feels like they're doing collab after collab. I've featured a lot of the shoes on Running Two Kicks, you know, from the yeah, Grateful yeah. Deads to the Ben and Jerry's to the, you know, so on and so forth. How cool was it to kind of work on on that template, especially since for years they had kind of gone back underground, you know? Yeah, I mean, this is probably our... Uh... I think maybe 10th SB that we've done. We did the lobster series. We did when pigs fly, holy grail. Uh, I think there was a couple others, I forget. So so for us, it's like working with your family. Uh, we push them, we get told no still, very much the same as we did when we started. So it's not like we have free reign to do whatever. Um, there's a lot of things to take into account, but yeah, man, we were excited to see the resurgence. As someone that lived through it the first time, um, it's bigger and better than ever. Yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, and it's I, so ironic that it happens alongside stay at home, you know, like yeah. people can get out there and I mean, you can't do a lot of social sports. You can't play basketball, you know, out there, they're taking rims down, but you can go skate for sure. Yeah. Skating, basketball, all these things are hand in hand. Our consumer isn't one dimensional anymore. So uh, growing up, like you played one sport, maybe these guys are a little bit of everything and they're into music and all these things. So I think SB is like a really good voice for um the kid that just really is in, encompassed by it all that loves everything and and you know is it is working on you know outfits all the way to designing diy stuff at home skating playing ball all these things so yeah they're kind of a rebellious group within nike and uh, i think that's why we get to do like some of the more silly like fun stuff with them looking ahead and the future of concepts and especially when it comes to 
uh, sneaker culture. Where do you guys see your responsibility there and uh, where do you see it going? Yeah, uh, that's the that is the best question uh, for us, you know, getting more in touch with the community. I think this has been an awakening on all levels. I think our team has done a great um, job of in, ensuring that everything we do, uh, there's a give back opportunity and a way to connect. So Tur Duncan, we did food drives with every skate shop across America. Um, you know, we also had our kids uh, volunteer at shelters and things like that. Uh, but yeah, we thought it was a great opportunity when it came to this shoe. Um, looking forward, it'll be inclusive of everything we do. And uh, as far as brick and mortar, uh, hopefully when things open back up again, we'll be looking to develop a sense of like uh, comfort where people can come and stay and hang. Uh, we'll have a gaming area in our Boston store, which was put on hold, unfortunately, uh, due to COVID. But uh, just things like that, where it's not just so transactional and uh, people are coming in, buying their shoe and leaving in a scurry on like a Saturday. So we're kind of building it. Uh, that's why we, we took so much square footage in all our new stores. Uh, as a way to hopefully offer people a place to chill, maybe hang, design, do development, and all things like that. Because um, that's something we used to do, but in fairness, it's gotten lost over the years as we've grown and gotten busier. Beyond point from Concepts, everybody, really excited about uh, these shoes and the future of the business. So thank you so much for joining me, man. Thanks for having me. Love you guys. Appreciate it, man. Take care. As is always the case on Ronnie Two Cakes, we gotta rate them shoes. Uh, this one's gonna be a fun one to talk about because there's so much going on here. I mentioned the feathers, I can't get over this. It looks like what a duck would look like. And it's even got those you know, neutral tones all around the shoe. But the iridescent swipe is what does it for me. The iridescent tongue, that really makes these things stand out. How creative uh, and what a wild thing to make sneakers about you know, thinking about ducks and turkeys and chickens. It's its pretty crazy. Sneaker culture has really just like taken a whole new angle and this is one of those shoes that's kind of leading the way behind that. So uh, let's give it a rating. I'm gonna give it a 92. Yes, that might seem high, but I could see this pictured with a lot of outfits and I think it's gonna be a popular one in the holidays as people sit around the fireplace. I hope all of you guys have had a wonderful Thanksgiving and Look forward to a happy holidays ahead. More Ronnie Two Kicks episodes uh, coming up, so please subscribe. Uh, who knows what shoe we're gonna go into next. I think we should do a shoe of the year episode, which will probably be our next one. Uh, but thank you guys so much. Happy holidays from everybody here at Ronnie Two Kicks, and we'll see you next time.